I enjoy the discussion of technology in education, but I have to and I have some mixed feelings about it. Um, on the one hand, I absolutely agree we're seeing technology open up new frontiers of knowledge, uh, revolutionizing the way we learn about the world. On the other hand, 90% of what we use the internet for is to watch cat videos or uh, videos of Snoop Dogg rapping about Hot Pockets to Kate Upton. Um, and when a student has a smartphone out in class and they're very subtle, they look like this when they're doing it. Um, you know, I, I have a pretty good sense of which side of that divide the student is engaged with. And so a lot of us um, as professors, as classroom instructors, tend to grumble about technology because we see it as a disruption. On the other hand, pretty much all technology is disruptive. Fire was disruptive. The wheel, the printing press, the automobile, these are all advances that upended the world as it had been before. So technology isn't just something that's changing education today, it's something that has always been uh, changing education. Just imagine being those first students who got to learn evolutionary biology from a textbook. Uh, just imagine being the first professor trying to convince his colleagues that there's this new thing, it's a textbook. We can teach evolutionary biology from it. It's great, it's going to change everything. Uh, and the response to that might not have been what, uh, what he or she expected. Um, so technology is changing, it's always been changing stuff in the past and it's always gonna be changing education in the future. Uh, to bring it back to my discipline, technology is also changing citizenship, uh, which is another thing that's really closely tied to liberal arts education. In the last few elections, we've seen the emergence of what's become known as big data. Campaigns are now building these enormous databases that tell them not just who lives where and what party they're registered with, but how often they vote, and then they cross-tabulate that with commercial databases about the cars people drive, whether they subscribe to HBO, uh, whether they have kids, and based on all that, they figure out which issues people care most about. And they do that so they can make individually tailored appeals to voters. So uh, if Alice cares most about education, that's the message a candidate will talk to her about. And if Bob cares mo most about taxes, that's what the candidate will talk to Bob about, and so on. And bear in mind that what we've seen in the last few elections has been a very primitive form of this. It's only going to become more sophisticated as time marches on. On the one hand, this is really potentially very exciting, because from a democratic standpoint, it's really good to have people who are seeking public office appeal to voters based on the issues that they actually care about. When candidates and their campaigns talk about the issue you care most about, it makes government seem less like an abstract argument over something you don't care about and more like something that's relevant and responsive and it makes a difference in your day-to-day -day life. On the other hand, on the other hand, there's a risk that all this data will be used not to have a better, more relevant conversation with citizens, but instead to manipulate them or to tailor messages that are something less than honest, or to tell voters exactly what a campaign has figured out that voter wants to hear, regardless of whether it's true or not, or regardless of whether it's possible or not. Instead of coming up with a message they think the public will respond to, candidates could come up with exactly the message they think an individual voter will react to, and do that in a manner that's much more precise and exacting than anything that's ever come before. And that's troubling. You know, the line between uh, persuasion and manipulation could become as fine and as thin as the line between Saturday night and Sunday morning. So to bring the future of politics back around to the future of the liberal arts, I'd suggest that one of our responsibilities as faculty and as a college is always going to be helping students develop the tools they'll need to be skeptical and informed citizens who can tell the difference between honest appeals and manipulation, who have the capacity to evaluate what they hear from candidates, from advertising, from the media, from the smiling young people with clipboards who show up at you, on your doorstep the week before the election. And if we want to have a functional democracy, which after the month we're having, I think would be a nice idea we should <laughs> think about, um, we, should have we need to have citizens who know how to think critically uh, and know how their system of government works and understand that campaigns are always going to put their best foot forward and have a sense of what their own interests as citizens actually are. And that's going to be the case regardless of whether campaigns are using big data or old fashioned shoe leather or they are using you know, whatever the new technology of the campaign of 2032 will be. I think there are some candidates already here campaigning for that year. Uh, and this is one of the things that makes studying politics as a social scientist unusual. The laws of physics and the laws of chemistry apply to you whether you want them to or not. Um, if we never perform Shakespeare or learn French or read Thomas Aquinas, the loss is basically going to be our own. But if we don't know how politics works and if we haven't thought about our role as citizens and what government does and how it affects our lives, then the effect isn't just limited to ourselves, it's something that affects our fellow citizens. So as our technology helps our politics become more and more focused and tailored on individual voters today, and as con technology continues to evolve in directions we can't even imagine, um, I think the goal, a goal for the liberal arts is to help our students figure out how to become the citizens their fellow citizens need them to be, uh, regardless of whatever technological changes tomorrow brings. <laughs>